Have you ever wanted to go to a sort of Comic Con and because the cosplay tickets were cheaper than the original tickets, you bought an expensive Harry Potter sweater because you've always wanted to Harry Potter outfit and this was a perfect opportunity to buy that sweater because you already had a wand and a time turner, so this would just complete the outfit. But now Comic Con is over and you're just really back into your Harry Potter face. So you're just casually scrolling online one day looking for some Harry Potter stuff and you come across a replica of the Marauders map and you really, really want it because it looks awesome. But then you look at the price and you realize that it's almost 40 bucks. So you don't want to pay that amount of money for a Marauders map. So you decide to go online and you're going to look for a, a DIY version of it and you found one. So now you decided that you're going to make a DIY Marauders map. Or is that just me? Hi there, my name is Anne and in this video I'm going to be making a DIY Marauders map. I've always wanted one, so I'm finally just going to make it and I hope that you will follow along with me. So let's get started. So I am actually going to follow a tutorial for this because the YouTuber Wizardry Workshop has uploaded an amazing detailed PDF file of it. Let me show you. So here we have his video on YouTube. I will link it in my video description and if you go to his website he has the download templates for it and you can make it in A3, A4 of a full size and I'm going to be doing it in A4 and he lists all supplies that you need. So this is definitely not my own tutorial I'm just here to make it and I'm going to be following his steps and I hope you just follow along. All credit goes to him I will link every single thing that I'm going to be using from him in my description definitely check him out he has so much more cool and amazing stuff that you can make your own and i'm just i'm totally falling in love with this channel and like i want to make so much stuff that he makes so let's get started <laughs> so i'm going to start printing this and just to be warned this document is 85 pages long so be sure to have enough paper and to have enough ink because oh my gosh that's a lot of pages <laughs> one eternity later i think i just spent 30 minutes a good 30 minutes printing this this took so long, it's so many pages, and I'm going to have to cut them all out. Every single one of them. This is going to take a while. I started cutting this with my exacto knife and I just went page by page. And every single time that I cut out a page, I put it with its category. So you have categories from A until F. And it's a good thing to keep them by their categories because that will be easier later on when you need to glue them. But while I was cutting this, I realized something which became quite of a tiny problem when I was gluing it. And that is the no background file has no guidelines on the paper of where you need to put glue. If you look at the original file where the background color is on it, you can see glue guidelines. They're not there on the no background file. And in the end, it didn't become such a big problem. It was quite easy to line them up. But that is something to note when you are doing this without the background file, because it puts another difficulty to this whole thing. And here are all the pages cut out and now I can go to the next step. So now it's time to make all these pages look old and weathered. And one way to do that is by using coffee. You can also use tea, but I found coffee is the easiest to do it. And how I did it was I had two kinds of cups of coffee, one with loads of water 
and a little bit of coffee and another cup with loads of coffee and a little bit of water because that way I could use the less coffee but more water cup to get an even color across all the pages and I could use the heavier coffee cup to get specific stains on the pages and I think that looks really really nice so I just took one page at a time did a base layer on both the back and the front of the paper and then I took my other cup of coffee and stained all of them one by one this took a while but I really think that this makes such a huge difference it makes all the pages look quite nice and honestly this is just so much fun to do it's really relaxing and just it takes this map a little bit to the next level and it makes it look really really cool okay so i'm finally done with staining them there are no more pages left and right now they are some of them are drying so that is group C, that is D, that's E, and that's F. And once they're almost dry, they look like this. So they're a little flimsy still. And they're going to take a lot of space up if I'm going to just let them dry like this. So what I did was I put them between books and then they turn into this stack. Very flat pages. So that's what I'm going to do with these ones. So I'm just going to put them here. And take my heaviest books. And now we wait until they are all dry. Okay, so all my pieces are finally dry and I'm ready to glue them. And I just wanted to show what the difference of the staining means. Because this is what it looked like stained. And this is normal white paper, like it made such a difference. I really love that I did this and I'm just really happy with it. And for the gluing part, I watched his video again, another video, and I'm just going to follow along with him as he glues it and hopefully get it right. And instead of a glue stick, I'm going to be using this thing. This is a like a whiteout thing but with glue instead and it's really, really handy. So I'm going to put these all away, keep them in order, because he starts with this one. And in another video that he made, he did it with a light box. So that is what I'm going to do. So the way that I started gluing these pages together was by his tips and tricks video in which he explains that he uses paper clips to hold the paper together and to be honest i don't really like that way it was very difficult to get the placement right and to make sure that your line stays where it needs to be and it just it was a lot more difficult than it should be so these first pieces to get them to glue together was difficult to say the least I struggled a lot with lining them up to, together, but as you can see, I did do it eventually, so that's great. And once I was done with gluing them up, he explained how you needed to fold that certain piece. So I just followed along with that and then my first piece was done. Okay, so this is the first piece and it looks like this. You can open it. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so cool. Okay, okay, great, great. Okay, next, next, next. <laughs> So as you can see, lining them up was very easy if you have a light box. I didn't really mind that I didn't have the glue guidelines. It didn't really matter. All that I had to do was just line it up on my light box 
and I could draw a line with a pencil and then I knew where I needed to glue. If you don't have a light box, don't worry. What you can use is either a phone or a tablet, a PC screen. You just need a screen and a white picture. Set your brightness to full brightness and there you go, you have a light box. It's really easy and it helps a lot with gluing them together. So I just did page by page and it went along quite quickly. And then I got to a certain page and it became less quickly. And I just kept struggling and struggling and struggling. Okay, so I think I need to give up on this one for a bit because as you could see, I was struggling quite a bit to get these together. And I think that I have to start over again with these pieces because I glued them horizontally and what I should have done is vertically glue them first and then put them together horizontally because right now my alignment is horrible and they won't fit together so I think there's nothing left for me to do except to start over again on these pieces. So great. Okay, so it is now the next day and I'm feeling so much better. Last night was just a disaster. I was a little bit sick, so I just, I felt like a failure. But now is the next day, I'm feeling really good. So let's do this again. I have printed out and cut out all the pages that I messed up last night and I can start again. Um, I was first thinking that I was going to weather them first, but while I was doing it yesterday, while I was gluing them together, I realized that it was kind of difficult because the pages were not perfectly straight anymore because of the weathering. It was very difficult to put them together and so I'm going to glue them first and then weather them. And this time I'm just going to use a glue stick. I know I said that the roll was better but it has already run out and I'm not gonna buy another one just for this project so I'm just going to use the, the good old glue stick and use that. So let's get started. So for this glue up what I did first was lay out all the pieces so that I could see how they fit together and then I would start the glue up. This time first gluing the pieces vertically together and then horizontally and this went so much better than last time. It went much faster and they lined up perfectly. So I'm really glad that I decided to do it again even though it is more work it just went way better this way and my alignment was way better. So I'm super happy about that. Okay, so I'm finally done with gluing all of parts A and this is what it looks like. It is huge and I'm really really happy with it. This went so much easier the second time around than the first round. And here is how it looks stained. This is the other side. Pretty goddamn cool. <laughs> so I've just glued all of parts A and the next step is gluing part B. But before I do that I'm going to stain the white parts of this paper right now. But I'm not gonna bore you with all that staining again because it's just boring. So I'm gonna take my coffee cups from there and then I'm going to stain again. And I'll see you after it. So I've just stained all the pieces from part A and they're now drying in the other room. And these are all the pieces from part B that I still need to glue together. But I think you've seen enough of me gluing. So let's just... And it's finished! So now the only thing that I have to do is fold this piece, then glue the other two pieces together, and then I will be done. 
Okay, so I have folded all the pieces and what I'm going to do now is just glue every single thing together. This stroke needs to go on the other side of here and this piece needs to go on the other side of here so that when you fold it, it becomes one giant nap. So let's do that. Okay, that's one side. And there we go. This is one thick map. <laughs> I will fold it better off screen. But basically the map is done now and now all we have to do is the inserts. And now for the very final last step, is placing these two pieces. So now it's finished and look. <laughs> It's a message to Professor Snape. Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot and Prongs offer their compliments to Professor Snape and request that he keeps his abnormally, abnormally large nose out of other people's businesses. How cool is this? I am unbelievably happy with how this came out. So here is how it looks. You can open it completely and it has so many secrets. I am so, so happy. <laughs> so, here it is. I love it so much. It is quite thick. I'm probably gonna refold it again off screen when I'm done with this video. But I, I love this so much. It was so much fun to make and I just, I had a blast. So, Wizardry Workshop. Thank you so much for the PDF file on how to make this and all your amazing videos. Every single video and every single thing that I used of his, I will link down below. Definitely check it out because this is so worth it to make it. And I know that this video was quite long. So if you watched it until the end, thank you so much. This was just a wild ride for me and I hope you liked it. But some things that I've learned along the way and that I would change if I would make it again is I would cut out all the individual pages and I would glue all 
the different categories together. So you have categories from A to F, I think, and I would glue A together, B together, C and so on all together, and then I would stain them because you will get a more cohesive look and it's just so much easier to glue them together when they're all when the pages are all straight and when they're not warped like this. <laughs> and one thing I do want to mention if you want to take on this project is I went through a lot of glue. I used this entire roller thing, this entire glue stick, and half of this entire glue stick just for this map. It's insane amount of <laughs> glue that you need for this and paper and ink. And just if you weather it on your own, it will become quite thick. But I do really like the look of this because he has a colored version and that way your pages will be fatter. But I do think that this really looks older than if you would print it colored. And honestly, the fact that the glue things weren't on the pages were less of an issue than I thought because a lot of the pages just line up perfectly. So <laughs> it was very easy to figure it out after a while where I needed to glue it. So I'm just, I'm really grateful that he made this. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm so happy with it. But that were all my notes that I had to say. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you have any more suggestions on things that I can craft like this, it doesn't have to be Harry Potter. It can be anything else. Please let me know because I really like doing this and I want to do it again with something else. So if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments and I will try to make it. My social media will be linked down below. So if you want to follow me on Twitter or TikTok or Instagram, this will be all down there and up here. But thanks again so much for watching. I hope you like it and I will see you in the next video. Bye.